how to understand which payment gateways are available for you on your Shopify store. My name is Maria Sparagas and I help thousands of seven and eight figure merchants figure out their payment processing so they can be reliable and worry free. Today, I want to talk to you about the payment gateways that are available for you on your Shopify store. So I get questions like this all the time, you know, people who have been shut down from Shopify or people who are on Shopify and wondering, you know, what other options are out there? It could be that you're not eligible to use Shopify payments or that you just rather work with somebody else. So today I'm going to explore with you what options you have, different options in terms of pricing and how you can ensure you get the most value from your Shopify store. First things first, I just want to explain to you what is the process? Like how does Shopify work? And understanding this will help you understand also what options you have available for you and how this all works. Now, let me give you a quick example of a checkout flow. So you have your customer that essentially accesses your checkout page or your website in order to buy something. That checkout page is hosted on a shopping cart, most likely. In this case, we're talking about Shopify. So it is hosted on Shopify and that shopping cart is connected to a payment gateway. If you're using Shopify payments, that would be your payment gateway, but it could be Stripe. It could be authorized.net. It could be a whole bunch of them. And then that payment gateway is connected to a credit card payment processor that allows the transaction to be processed and for you to get your money from your customer. Your credit card processor is connected to a credit card network. That's like Visa, MasterCard, Amex, and the rest of them. And then the credit card network is connected to your customer's credit card issuer. So again, it's Visa, MasterCard, and your customer's bank that supports that. And it just basically kind of goes back to the beginning. So the customer's issuing bank then goes back and gives a response to the card network that gives a response to your credit card processor. And that response is sent back to the gateway and sent back to your shopping cart in order for you to know that that transaction was successful or it was declined. This all happens in a matter of milliseconds, but that is the transaction flow. Now, once you understand that, you'll understand that Shopify payments acts as a gateway and also a credit card processor. Same thing with Stripe. It acts as a payment gateway and a payment processor because it does both things in one platform. For example, authorize.net. A lot of people say, hey, you know, I'm on Shopify. I want to use authorize.net. Authorize.net is just a payment gateway. What that means is you can use authorize.net to connect to thousands of credit card processors. So that that option alone really opens up a lot of possible payment processors that you can work with. Now, let me just kind of go through a few of these options and give you the pros and cons of using each. Now, if you're on Shopify, the easiest thing to do is really to use Shopify payments. It's all integrated. There are no additional fees to use Shopify payments other than the credit card transaction fees that Shopify payments will offer you but there are some caveats to using Shopify payments. First of all, Shopify payments is only available in the US, Puerto Rico, Canada, UK, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore. There could be a few other countries that get added here and there, but it is pretty limiting. And you know, if you're in other parts of the world, you can't even use Shopify payments. Now you still may want to use Shopify as a platform for your store, but Shopify payments is not in the cards for you in order to operate your business. If you're not in one of the regions that I mentioned. Now, another thing that you have to keep in mind is that your rate with Shopify will change depending on the Shopify plan that you use. So you can actually get a lower rate if you subscribe to a higher payment plan with Shopify. You have to be doing obviously a significant amount of volume to make it worth it. The base rate is 2.9% plus 30 cents a transaction. And that's available for you as the base plan with paying $29 a month. Now, if you're making five figures or more in sales per month, then you want to look at perhaps taking the medium plan. Now the medium plan is $79 per month. This is always in US dollars and it could change per region, but in the US $79 a month will reduce your rate to 2.7% per month, plus that 30 cents per transaction. And, you know, obviously you have to be doing five figures plus in order to, you know, make any sense of paying the additional fee. 
Now, if you are, you know, somebody who's doing six figures plus and really, really high volumes per month, you may want to consider the 299 per month plan. And that will give you a rate of 2.5% plus 30 cents a transaction. So it's really just doing the math and figuring out, you know, if paying $299 a month will be worth it for you to save 0.4% on your transactions. As I said, you have to be doing significant volume to even consider that most people will just take that basic $29 a month plan because it, it will give you what you need in order to get your business started. Now for marketers that are doing seven figures a month or more, Shopify does have something that they don't really advertise very much, but they do mention it, uh, some parts on their website, which is a plus plan that's available on a one, two or three year term. And what they'll do is they'll look at your performance and look at your previous processing history in your store, and then might be able to get you an even better pricing plan. So. In this case, you have to have some processing history and you have to be a tenured business. You can't go straight off the bat and contact Shopify to get that. Now you may have been working with somebody else in the past. So if you have been working with somebody else and you want Shopify to take a look and give you a competing offer, that's another possibility. But if you're a new business or you have less than a year of processing history, that is probably not going to be an option for you. Now, if Shopify payments is not an option for you, for example, you are out of region, you are a direct response business, direct response businesses, direct to consumer businesses traditionally don't do very well on Shopify. Shopify payments is quite risk averse. So if you would qualify yourself as a high risk business, then Shopify payments is probably not the answer for you. Shopify payments also accepts a lot of other different payment gateways. In fact, they have over 70 different gateways that they support and these can be very regional and they don't necessarily support credit card payments only. For example, if you're in Europe and you do SEPA payments or direct bank transfers, or you need ACH, or you need some kind of payment wallet, they have a lot of very different regional payment methods to really cater to your market. So take a look and see if there's anything else that you can use. But if we really think about strictly credit card payments, to check out is one option. Stripe is another one. Although keep in mind that Shopify payments is essentially a white label of Stripe. So they're very similar in terms of technology, but you could decide, for example, to use Stripe if you have some previous processing history and you want to just upload it into your Shopify payment store. You could also think about using your own payment processor. That's not a third party processor like Stripe or to check out and so forth. And if you want to do that and work with a provider like direct Paynet, which is my company, you can actually decide to use the gateway authorized.net. Now authorized.net is just a payment gateway. What that means is that it's just a software that connects your store to a payment processor. As I said earlier, the payment gateway is literally just a connector between your shopping cart and your payment processor. So you can choose to work with a direct merchant account provider like direct Paynet and still use your Shopify store. And we will connect your credit card processing account to the gateway authorized.net. So by selecting, for example, authorized.net, that actually opens you up to thousands of different providers that you can work with and you can negotiate for better terms, better pricing, look for somebody who supports your business type that you're wanting and willing to work with because authorized.net really will open that up for you. And Shopify does support authorized.net as a payment gateway. So keep in mind that you wouldn't contact authorized.net directly because they're just a software. You would contact a company like direct Paynet or another merchant account provider, establish a relationship with them, tell them that you're looking to work with authorized.net as a gateway. They will get you a merchant account. And then what happens after that is they'll plug it into authorized.net for you. And you just have a username and password that you can plug in directly into your Shopify store. So it's super simple and fast, just like the other solutions that you have, but it gives you a lot more control into your payment process and you'll probably be dealing with a real person versus bots and so forth. So this might be the best option for you if you're a direct response business or if you're a high volume business and you need specific things in terms of customer service or reporting or special features. Now you may be wondering, how about PayPal? Where does PayPal fit into this? Now PayPal is a limiting payment processor, meaning 
it, it, it does have, you know, obviously that brand recognition and it does have a lot of converts. A lot of people really love to pay with PayPal, but just offering PayPal may actually dissuade some of your customers. So what you want to do is you want to have your own payment processor, for example, Stripe or Shopify payments, or work with a direct merchant account provider and work with authorized.net payment gateway, and then perhaps add PayPal as a secondary payment option. PayPal does increase conversions. It does help, you know, push some people through to buying what your product or service, but relying on it as your sole payment processor will likely be a more negative than positive for you. Now, I hope that helps and brings a little bit of clarity to the Shopify payments conundrum and figuring out what your best payment solution is and your best payment provider options out there. And if you have any more questions or you need more clarifications on how this works, feel free to comment down below and let me know what you need or feel free to reach out to me at this email address and don't forget to like and subscribe for more amazing content on your payment processing.